it's the Middle Ages and a man is sitting in a cell awaiting one of the worst punishments the world has to offer. Even for those brutal times, he's been sentenced to be walled up, alive, for the crime of breaking his monastic vows. He brokers a deal with those who want him dead. If I can write a book in just one night, a book that contains all human knowledge and outshines the majesty of our great god and our great monastery, can I forego this terrible punishment? His captors agree, knowing full well that such a task is impossible. But the monk gets to work, scribbling frantically from morning until evening, and the clock strikes midnight and he knows he cannot finish this book of knowledge, so he prays, not to his god, but to the fallen angel, Lucifer. Help me finish this book, cries the monk, and you can take my soul. Lucifer, not one to pass up such a great deal, agrees, and he finishes the behemoth of a book for the man. As a note of gratitude, the monk adds an illustration to the pages of the book, which is a sketch of the devil himself. That's the legend anyway. We'll get around to seeing just how true that could be. Let's go back to the year 1648. It's the last year of what's called the Thirty Years' War, a war that involved many European states and would claim millions of lives. What was it all over? Well, religion for one and, of course, power. In July that year, the Swedish army had overcome the army defending the city of Prague, a city located in the modern-day Czech Republic. What they found in a monastery there was something no man had ever seen before. They discovered a book, an old and spectacular book, something so big that it could hardly be picked up. It contained the full Latin Bible, it contained tales from ancient history, and it also contained the vast knowledge of medicine. Was this the book that the monk had written when in cahoots with the devil? One thing for sure is that it was, and still is, the largest illustrated medieval manuscript ever created. And yes, inside it was a drawing of the devil. The book became known as the Codex Gigas. In Latin, that simply translates to giant book. A giant it is, too. The 320 pages are made from vellum, which is a material made from animal hide that was often used for writing on. Believe it or not, it took 160 donkeys to get enough hide to create the book. The total page count is unknown, as many pages went missing throughout history and today only 310 remain. Still, quite the feat for a medieval scribe, especially if forced to write this book in just one night. The Devil's Bible is 36 inches tall, 20 inches wide, and 8.7 inches thick. It weighs about the same as many of you folks watching the show, weighing in at 165 pounds. Suffice it to say, when the Swedes saw this thing, they were blown away. They'd seen nothing like it. No one had in any country. It was a work of brilliance, and as we said, it didn't just contain the full Christian Bible, but had chapters on history and medicine. There were even pages containing information on things such as exorcisms and how to repent for one's sins. But who wrote it? That's the question that's always confounded historians. You see, while it's written in Latin, it also contains Hebrew, Greek, and Slavic alphabets. So maybe a lot of people wrote the thing, thought historians. But on further analysis over the years, many historians agreed that the handwriting, the mood, and the illustrations must have come from just one person. Taking into account the work that went into such a book, that one author would have been writing and sketching in day in, day out for at least 20 years, maybe even 30 years. That or some chastised monk made a deal with the devil one night while awaiting an execution. But who was this guy? Well, as the legend goes, he was named Herman the Recluse and he was a 13th century monk working in Bohemia, part of today's Czech Republic. So what do we know about Herman? Given his epithet, we know he probably didn't get out much. In Latin, his name was Hermanus Hermitus, which you can guess relates to the word hermit. So did Herman make a pact with the devil and get the book finished in just one night? Or did he live up to his name and stay home for 20 or 30 years until the book was complete? The answer is he most likely spent his entire life writing the manuscript, given that people didn't tend to live too long back then. But why did Herman give the Prince of Darkness a page all to himself? It's not exactly clear. But if you open the book with the devil exposed, the opposite page is an illustration of a heavenly city. Perhaps Herman was making a point, live a life of sin and this is the fella you meet after you die. Or live a sinless life and you get a ticket to heaven. In the pages after the picture of the devil, the reclusive monk gives detailed instructions of how to exorcise the Prince of Darkness either from people or inanimate objects. There were also some spells that were supposed to heal the sick and two spells relating to conjuring the devil. The book is obviously anti-devil, so you might ask why is there a conjuring spell? Well, historians now believe that the conjuring spells were there to protect people from the devil, not get into bed with him. As for the missing pages, some scholars believe they were intentionally removed. 
Why, you might ask? Well, that's where the conspiracy theories come in. Maybe the lost pages contain something that mortals like you were never meant to see, or maybe they were just stolen, or perhaps in the time the information on those pages was deemed offensive. We know that in 1697 the book was damaged. It was sitting in the Stockholm Castle in Sweden when the building caught fire. As the story goes, according to a vicar named Johan Eriksons, who wrote about the fire some 50 years later, the book was thrown from the building and it landed on someone. Imagine that, a book weighing the same as an adult male falling on someone's head. We guess the victim was severely injured. Codex Gigas was still intact at the end of the ordeal, although it said some pages went missing. In view of that accident, some people have said the Devil's Bible is cursed and will bring misfortune on anyone that goes near it. That's probably not true since it's been sitting in the National Library of Sweden in Stockholm for a long time and it hasn't seemed to have cursed the place yet. On top of that, thousands upon thousands of people have seen it in that museum and we expect they didn't get cursed either. Now you should go and watch this show, The Origin of Evil, The Devil, or instead watch this one.